The police, they need a description of that big, bad wolf. They don't just need a description, they need a model of that big, bad wolf. This is a great lesson idea to demonstrate the use of forces because it allows the children to have a hands-on experience of force. What does he look like? Who can describe what he looks like? His ears are as pointy as a shark's teeth. <laughs> I send the children off in pairs to start modelling their big bad wolf with one child doing the modelling whilst the other child writes what the child's doing. I finish crying and I'm going to big bad wolf. <laughs> How are you going to make the hairs on his back? Take your clay. You're going to pinch. So, is pinch a push or a pull? Pull. A good tip for this lesson is to allow the children to use different coloured pencils to mark whether each force is a push or a pull. In this case, I used a blue pencil for a push and a red pencil for a pull. It's a good idea to use a character the children are familiar with and also one whose features can be accentuated. The big bad wolf is perfect for this. Ears can be pinched, you can push in for the eye socket and the teeth can be pulled down from the mouth. What are you doing now? I'm, going, I'm squeezing him up. You're squeezing him. Is squeeze a push or a pull? What are you a squeezing push. his tummy? It's a push, good girl. You've squeezed his tummy. Whilst they're carrying on with their models, I go around and ensure that they're using the scientific vocabulary. I also provide the vocabulary on the tables for the children to use should they need it. Which bit has Eden squeezed, Esther? The, the body. So do you want to write that onto your piece of paper? Squeeze. Once the children have made their models, I employ a technique called jigsawing, whereby one child from each pair moves on to the next pair and talks to them about how they've made their model. We put a finger in to make the mouth. Was it a push or a pen? But it was a push. This allows me to ensure that the children have understood the vocabulary and that they can explain it to somebody else. Out. Good boy, you pinched and you pulled out a bit. Good science words, good boy. This is a great activity to use peer assessment for. If the child feels that their partner has fulfilled the success criteria, they can put a blue smiley face on the top of their work. I'm going to give you a smiley face. If they feel there's something that they need to work on, then they can put this into a red target cloud. On your sheet of paper, um, you've sometimes got your writing muddled up where you're going to put them. Like, there's two rolls in your piece of paper and one of them is in the wrong colour. Giving the children a ball of clay allows them to really have a hands-on experience of forces. They can see what happens when they push or when they pull. They can see that a pinch is a pull because they're pulling it away from the piece of clay. Chopsticks ready, on your marks. Get set, that's a jelly joke. Go! The jelly investigation is a great way of getting children to think about friction. And it's lots of fun. Well, I think you did really well. But this time, we're going to make it, perhaps, a little bit different. It's all about friction and what is useful and what is not useful. Oh, that's nice. Who thinks it's going to make it harder? Go! This is a really quick idea 
to get children thinking about friction. Before we start the lesson, I need to talk to the children about how they're going to answer the question, which track will be the best for the balloon rocket? Can anybody quickly remember what we said that we were going to have to do in order to make this a fair test? Only changing one thing so it's a fair test. OK, who can remember what that one thing was? We're going to change the material for the track. What do we call that one thing that we change in our experiment? The variable. Well done, the variable. So one of our track materials is wire. Nylon. String, well done. Super. And what are we going to be measuring? The distance the balloon got. You're going to be able to thread the balloon onto the track, so the track gets threaded through the little straw. So, I'm going to take the balloon. To set the rocket off, hold the end of the balloon so that one of your class can snip it off while you pinch it to keep the air in until the countdown's complete. Four, three, two, one, Whee! Oh, fantastic! For this activity, I decided to measure the distance travelled by the balloon using a tape measure rather than a stopwatch because I was unsure how reliable the stopwatch measurements would be and whether the children would have fast enough reactions to start and stop the watch quick enough to get reliable results. If I hold the balloon for you... When the children are making their predictions, they realise that the plastic coated wire, for example, will be a better surface because it is smooth and therefore the straw attached to the balloon will run smoothly down the wire and there'll be less friction. However, things like string, hopefully they will comment on the rough surface. This time we're doing the string, what are we expecting? What might your prediction be? There might be more friction. There might be, that's right. Three, two, one. Children realise that the string has a rough surface and therefore the balloon will not travel as far. 74 centimetres. I do this as a whole class investigation because the sheer size makes it more practical to do that way and also with all the children sat together watching I think it really helps build the excitement up around the investigation. Oh, 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 oh. The children are all really keen to come up and have a go and it's important that they take part. Just because it's a whole class investigation doesn't mean that they can't all have a hands-on experience. Wow. Yeah. Not all the tracks will work as expected. There may be a few surprises along the way. Yeah. Oh. 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 This provides the children with an opportunity to consider things that they hadn't when setting up the investigation. That's right. The why was too bumpy. <gasps> Rocket Balloon is a great lesson idea because it's big and bold and it really gives the children a chance to see how friction impacts things right in front of their eyes. Our aim is to find out what makes the best paper helicopter. In the paper helicopters activity, we're encouraging children to plan and organise their own fair test investigation. Drop that down. This is a nice fun activity to do. Children just love playing with the paper helicopters to start off with, but then immediately they come with their own questions saying, what if we cut the wings? What if we made them slightly longer? What if we changed the weight? It's not the teacher leading the class into an investigation, but the children deciding their own ideas. And when they've got that ownership, they really want to try and investigate things themselves. Are you all happy with how to use a paper helicopter? Yeah! So now we're going to try and investigate what makes the best type of helicopter. What are those sorts of things that we can change? 
Joe. Um, well, you could change, um, you could snip a bit off the wings. <laughs> so I've put length in centimetres on that post-it note. What else could we change? Um, you could add a paper clip. You could add a paper clip to add more weight onto it or take paper clips off to make less weight. But how are we going to know when it's the best? What are we going to measure? The time of the fall. How accurate it is where it lands in, on, on a square. How many spins it will do. So what we've got on the board behind us is all the things we could change in pink and all the things we could measure in yellow. What I'm going to ask you to do now is as a group table, just choose one of those things in pink that you can change, or you are going to change, and one of those things that you decide that you're going to measure. You hold it. When the class have given all their ideas of everything that they could change and all the things they could measure, then each group can decide on one post-it, one thing that they're going to change, and that post-it can then be moved down into the next category. Everything else can be moved into the category, which is things that need to be kept the same to keep it a fair test. You need to make two different helicopters so that in the end you have three helicopters, the one you started with and two different ones that you can compare with each other. I'm going to ask three of your group to come up to the front, stand on the step, hold them out at the same height and then drop them for you to work out which one you think is the best of your three. So, Megan, what have you changed on your three helicopters? We've well, changed the length of the wings. And what are you going to measure? Um, the time of the second time it takes to go down. Okay, so watch out for which one lands first and which one lands last. Yeah. Three, three, two, one, drop. Three, three, two, one, two, one, three, one, drop. Once you set up this idea that children have to make only one change, they get really competitive. So yeah, hold them up, pick them up again. To make sure that no other groups are cheating at all and so that all their hands are exactly equal heights, they're dropping them at exactly the same time. When they're spotting any other errors, when other groups drop their helicopters, they're learning about what makes a fair test. I'd like to put on a big piece of sugar paper the question that you were trying to find out. After they've done their investigation, a really simple but effective way of getting them to show their working and show their understanding is by taking a large piece of sugar paper, asking them to write their question at the top, stick on their three different designs of helicopter, maybe a ready, steady go beneath, and then score their helicopters depending on how good they think they were. First place was made of paper, second place was made of tracing paper, and third place was made of cardboard. This is a really straightforward thing for them to do. It's very quick, it's very easy, and saves them having to write up a full investigation with lots of writing in their books.